Wait, wait, wait! Welcome to Victoria Falls. We've got waterfalls that roar, wildlife that wow, languages that click, and insane activities that will have you wondering, wait, why did I sign up for this again? From gorge swings to gorgeous views to gorging on delicious food, in this video, we'll show you some of the best things to do in Victoria Falls. Hey there, poor traveler! We are Vince and Josh. We've just wrapped up a 5-day stay in this corner of Zimbabwe and Zambia, and I can confidently proclaim it as one of our most unforgettable trips ever. But before we dive into why, if you're new here or you're a regular but haven't subscribed yet, please take the time to do just that. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it, then select all so you're always notified whenever we have new uploads. We're now past 200,000 subbies, so thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're watching this on Facebook, don't forget to follow and like this page and join our 2 million strong community too. Okay, Victoria Falls, one of the 7 natural wonders of the world for a reason. But there's more to it than its famous cascades. There is a lot to do here. Some of them are budget friendly and others are on the expensive side. And we've tried most of them, so if you have limited time or budget, we hope this video could help you decide which ones to prioritize and save up for. Note that we're not ranking them based on how wondrous or significant they are because they're all fabulous, but by how much we enjoyed them. Starting with... Number 10, Victoria Falls Bridge. Straddling the Zambezi River below, the Victoria Falls Bridge links Zambia and Zimbabwe. It was the first thing that greeted us. You see, we entered the region via Livingstone Airport on the Zambian side, so we had to cross this bridge to get to Victoria Falls Town. Save for the view, the bridge itself looked unassuming, somewhat underwhelming when you were crossing it. But when seen from afar, its beauty becomes more obvious as much of its features are underneath. Completed in 1905, it hangs at 128 meters above the second gorge of the mighty Victoria Falls. My first thought was, at this height, it's a great spot for bungee jumping. Obviously, I wasn't the first person to have that thought because, well, it is actually a bungee jumping spot. Just imagine standing on the edge with the thundering rapids below and thinking, well, this is a life choice. And then off you go, free-falling toward the Zambezi River in the most adrenaline-pumping seconds of your life. It's only number 10 because we didn't try the bungee here. We went for another thrilling jump, which you'll see later on in this video. If you're not into extreme activities, crossing the bridge on foot is also a great experience. You can casually stroll from Zimbabwe to Zambia or vice versa because why not? Snap some selfies with the border signs and feel very, let's say, international. Just don't forget your passport if you want to cross over. Number 9, Victoria Falls Town Tour Yes, the town was named after the nearby waterfall. It might be small, but it's packed with charm. The town has some cool cafes and restaurants where you can kick back with a coffee or grab a bite to eat. The pace here is chill, making it a great spot to relax and soak in the local vibe. It's also very safe. Some might find it hard to believe because we only hear about Zimbabwe in the news when there's political unrest or something awful that happens, but Victoria Falls is very different. Petty crimes do exist, don't get us wrong, but even those numbers are pretty low. But as all our guides said, heinous crimes here are very rare. So yes, feel free to wander through the local markets, but observe the usual common sense precautions. Here are some of the spots in the town center that we paid a visit to. The first was Shoestrings Backpackers Lodge. Established in 1997, this family-run property is a favorite among budget travelers, but it offers more than accommodations. It also has a cafe and cocktail bar by the pool, and yes, non-guests are very welcome here. On some weekends, it also hosts a bazaar where you'll find handmade crafts, jewelry, and garments. It's the perfect place to pick up a unique souvenir or two. And it's also famous or notorious for its nightlife. Next is Elephant's Walk Shopping and Artist Village. It's not a real village but a trendy mall. 
it's not that apparent if you judge it by the cover. And by cover, I mean its name and facade. It's more like a, you know, artsy hub where you can find beautiful handcrafted souvenirs, local art, and quirky African curios. You'll feel like you're wandering through an outer gallery with sculptures and crafts made by talented Zimbabwean artists at every turn. Okay. What's your name, sir? My name is Ephraim, my brother. Huh? Ephraim. 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 Like in the Bible. From intricate jewelry to vibrant paintings, it's a great place to grab a unique memento of your trip or just soak in some creative vibes. Plus, there are cafes around if you need a snack after all that shop. The Three Monkeys Restaurant and Bar is an open-air dining spot which has a cool rustic chic vibe with its quirky decor. The menu's got something for everyone whether you're in the mood for a juicy burger, wood-fired pizza, or their legendary cocktails. We had its Parma Pizza which is thin crust topped with tomato base, mozzarella, prosciutto, and fresh arugula or rocket. It was excellent with the rocket cutting the richness of the cheese and the umami of the meat. We also ordered grilled half chicken with fries, but we had to send this one back to the kitchen because the chicken was undercooked and we didn't want to risk getting sick on this trip. When it came back, the flavors and seasoning were on point. We could still detect the smokiness. That hiccup aside, we had a great time here. It's the kind of spot where you can just relax after a day of adventures and swap stories while digging into a hearty meal. The portions are no joke though. You definitely won't leave hungry. Plus, the service was top-notch. The town also has a few other crafts market and small museums that you might want to check out while you're here, but we weren't able to because of time constraints. Want to get a real feel for local life? Head 10 kilometers outside of town to Monde Village and visit a local family. But please don't go on your own and knock on a random house without advance notice. Make sure you have a guide or book a tour because they have arrangements with certain families. It is an authentic and humbling way to see how the people in this region live, work, and celebrate their culture. It's home to families from five tribes. And these individual backgrounds are visible even in the layout of their homes and design of their roofs. Our hosts were Mr. Nkube and family who graciously welcomed us into their home. Nkube means monkey in the vernacular. They shared some fascinating bits about their way of life including their names. Fun fact, their surnames are actually their totem or an animal which serves as an emblem for their family or lineage. Like our last names, it also gets passed on to the next generation. And they are not allowed to eat that specific animal as it's considered taboo. For example, Mr. and Kube's family is expected to protect the animal that serves as their totem. In this case, the monkey because in Kube means monkey. So their family totem is monkey. He also toured us around the kitchen and showed us how they cook and prepare their meals. And he also taught us a bit about their native tongue. Many African languages employ the clicking sound and we tried our darndest to learn it. I think I succeeded. I think. This is the kind of experience that sticks with you long after your trip. It's raw, real, and gives you a whole new perspective on life in this part of the world. <laughs> I think we should try. No, 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 no. <laughs> Number 7. Ele Crew Elephant Sanctuary If you've ever dreamed of getting up close with elephants without them being on the other side of a fence, the Ele Crew Elephant Sanctuary is where it's at. This isn't your typical zoo experience. This isn't a zoo at all. Here, you'll learn about elephant conservation and get to know these incredible animals up close. The sanctuary is all about ethical interaction, so you'll be learning about their habits, diet, and how they're being protected. Our guide Tijan led our group on our morning walk with the gentle giants. The elephant assigned to us was this beauty named Kariba. She was named after a dam along the Zambezi. Like her peers here, she was rescued, and her caretaker desire allowed us to interact with her. 
Whether you're a wildlife lover or just want to hang out with some of the coolest animals on the planet, this sanctuary is an experience that will leave you with some warm, fuzzy feelings and probably a lot of elephant selfies. Number 6. Safari Adventures Victoria Falls might be famous for its, well, waterfalls, but let's not forget you're still in safari country. Many camps offer game drives across the many game reserves in the area, like this one, Wild Horizons Wildlife Sanctuary, where you can spot three of the big five, the lion, the leopard, and the African bush elephant. But there are many other wildlife here. Barely a minute into the property, as we were entering, we already spotted a huge male kudu with its elegant spiral horns catching our attention for a full minute. You can hop on a 4x4 and set off on a sunrise or sunset game drive to see them. I particularly enjoyed sunset game drives. In the late afternoon, our driver guide Becky took us across the reserve to see the animals. The beauty of these sunset drives is that some of the animals are more active as the day cools off and the landscape turns into a photographer's dream. But just before sundown, he pulled over next to this cliff and set up a drinks and canopy table. They got bite-sized pastries, all sorts of nuts, and a variety of drinks, cocktails included. And we could have as much as we wanted. There were cheers and quiet conversations while admiring the view of Batoka Gorge as the African sun was diving below the horizon. On the way back, we still tried to catch a glimpse of more wildlife, especially leopards. Night game drives had a different vibe to it too. It's a tiny bit more thrilling or frightening, but that's part of the fun. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, let's go! Wait, wait, wait! Welcome to Zimbabwe! Ah! Number 5. Lookout Cafe Gorge Swing and Zipline Something about the name Lookout Cafe paints a picture of tranquility and it is tranquil for the most part. This cafe slash restaurant serves tasty meals and coffee but if you so please, with a side of adrenaline rush. You see, this Lookout Cafe is perched on a cliff overlooking Batoka Gorge. While it is a great place to chill out while admiring a gorgeous view of the surrounding rugged landscape, you'll also hear the screams of daredevils every now and then. Here, you can strap in for the gorge swing or zipline right over the edge. And it's not for the faint-hearted, but the rush is 100% worth it. We know because we tried it. Are you sure? Once you're done swinging over the gorge like a superhero, grab a bite to eat, relax, and soak in those unreal views without your feet dangling in mid-air. We did it the other way around. We had a meal first because we were a bit famished when we arrived and then went crazy with the activities after. Not the most ideal order of things, but yeah, that's what we did. The gorge swing in particular was the wildest swing we've ever been on. Wildest. After a nerve-wrackingly brief um, a briefing, we were instructed to hold on to some rope and jump off the cliff. I don't know what we were thinking back then, but we did it. A zipline also runs across the gorge, but yes, we did it too. Something about the air here in Zimbabwe that made us try insane things that we would never try elsewhere. Once your heart rate has settled, sit back at the cafe and enjoy a cocktail because you'll probably need it. But seriously, don't miss this place. It's the perfect balance of chill and ballsy. Plus, it makes for great bragging rights when you get home. Number 4. Victoria Falls National Park Of course, this is the one place most tourists come here for. It's where you should go to get up close and personal with the largest liquid curtain on Earth. It's easy to feel awestruck and insignificant in its presence, and awestruck and insignificant we felt when we visited. It's a sensory bombardment. Your eyes are flooded with majestic views, your ears are overwhelmed with its constant rumbling, and your face is sprinkled with cold water occasionally. You're drenched before you even know it. Upon entering the park, we found a map scribbled with a walking trail and marked with all 16 viewpoints. Yes, 16. But instead of doing it chronologically like most normal tourists do, 
Our guide, Arthur, convinced us to do it the other way around. The best lookouts, he claimed, were the first few and we might find the rest underwhelming if we went there first. And he was right. Doing it backwards was like building it up and preparing ourselves for a climax. As we wandered along the walking trails, we were met with jaw-dropping vistas of the Cascades, the Gorge, and Zambia on the other side, with double rainbows every now and then. No biggie, but seriously, it's pretty magical. Messy and noisy, yes, but magical. And oh, there's plenty of wildlife here too. As we were following a trail, a bush box suddenly jumped out and dashed in front of us. It somehow made our guide nervous, not because he was scared of a bush buck, but because the last time it happened, just a few days prior, the poor antelope was being chased by a leopard. And apparently, leopard sightings within the park isn't unheard of at all. The following day, we met another guide who also had a recent leopard sighting in the area. You might be wondering, Yosh, what? Victoria Falls itself is just number 4 on your list? Well, I can explain. The park allows you to see the waterfall up close, but something this big and grand, in my opinion, is best appreciated if you take a few steps back. Or higher. A few steps higher. Which brings us to number 3. The Flight of Angels Helicopter Tour Why settle with just walking around with birds overhead when you can also be the bird? Take to the skies for the famous Flight of Angels Helicopter Tour operated by the Zambezi Helicopter Company which gives you an unbeatable bird's eye view or angel's eye view of Victoria Falls. This is one of those bucket list experiences that will have you grinning from ear to ear and snapping about a thousand photos. Especially if it's your first time to ride a helicopter like us. And we couldn't think of a better, more memorable chopper debut than here. We started the day with a quick briefing and we were given headsets so we could block the deafening roar of the engines and also hear our pilot better. We waited a bit and when it was finally our turn, we had our phones ready. All this was happening with the camera crew following us. Seeing it from this vantage point will make you better appreciate the sheer scale of the falls, the swirling Zambezi River, and all the natural and man-made landmarks that punctuate it including the famous Victoria Falls Bridge. If you can, try to snag the front seat for a wider view. Depending on what you book, the chopper will follow one of three routes. And these are the rates. At the end of the ride, you'll watch a mini documentary incorporating clips of you and the helicopter. That's why a camera crew was following us. Because they'll sell us the footage after. So decide whether or not you like it enough to purchase a copy of it. We did. We did purchase. It was $25. It's a short ride but it packs a lot in terms of wow factor. Plus you get to say you've flown over one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Not a bad story for your next get together with friends. Number 2. Zambezi River Sunset Cruise not every adventure has to involve dangling off a bridge or swinging into a gorge. The Zambezi River also offers a much more laid-back way to experience Victoria Falls. And I have only three words. Best sunset ever. And after 14 years of traveling in 60 countries, we've seen more than our fair share of sunsets. It has the usual celestial spectacle, the sky turning all pastel and then bright orange as the sun calls it a day. But what the Zambezi stages isn't just a show for the eyes. It's the whole production, props, sound effects, and an unpredictable cast of characters. You might see elephants on the banks going for a drink, hippos lurking in the water, and flocks of native birds screeching and zooming above. And when the sun starts to set, you'll feel that unmistakable African magic settle in. All this while munching on a parade of hors d'oeuvres and sipping unlimited cocktails. My poison of choice was the aptly named Zambezi Sunset. Just a casual evening in Africa. No big deal. Yes, I'm placing it higher than the waterfall itself. I don't know, I just enjoyed this sunset cruise so much more. Maybe it was the full experience. Maybe it was the serenity of it and I'm getting older so I value serenity more and more. Or maybe it's just the alcohol. Maybe that.
And number one, Devil's Pool. Of course, we saved the best for last. And for this, we had to cross over to Zambia at the crack of dawn. That's right. If you want to experience the ultimate thrill of swimming right on the edge of Victoria Falls, you've got to be an early bird. And trust me, it's worth every bleary-eyed minute. After a quick briefing and outfit change, swimming attire is best, we hopped onto a boat and headed out to Livingstone Island. The air was chilly enough, but then comes the real kicker, the water. Now, I wish I could tell you it's so cold, it's refreshing, but the reality is more like it's so cold, I can't feel my toes or my face. But it's part of the adventure, right? Hand in hand, we then crossed the water to this rock on the edge of the waterfall. Mind you, we were only in swimming shorts. The cold was hitting us from all directions and the sight was constantly reminding us that we're literally on the edge of a 100 meter drop. But don't worry, it's completely safe as long as you follow your guide's instructions. There have been no fatalities here. None. Nil. Nada. Zero. The guides were professionals and very attentive, but even that doesn't stop your brain from screaming, What am I doing? After braving the freezing water and getting a few heart-stopping photos at the very edge, you can officially say you've taken a swim in the world's craziest infinity pool. If I've never felt a mixture of exhilaration and terror before, well, this was it. You might be asking, how did we get to have all these footage and photos? Well, our guide had our phones and took on videography duties for every single one on the group. After a rather edgy photo session, we were then led to this lookout for a good look of a nearby waterfall. Just make sure you bring a change of clothes and a lot of courage. You need it. We were also served breakfast at a small camp nearby. Vince had a porridge while I chose this smoky pulled pork wrap with salad on the side. The pool is accessible only from August to December during the dry season. Outside this period, the rain and water level rendered the site inaccessible. So if this is on your bucket list, mind your timing. Although it is possible to explore the Victoria Falls area DIY style, there seem to be not a lot of public transportation options in the area. To get to the Victoria Falls National Park, most hotels and lodges offer free shuttle transfers. But for other attractions, the best way is to really join a tour. Because these tours are guided, you also end up with better appreciation of each stop. Full disclosure, this Zimbabwe trip was made possible by Constellation Travels. Our original itinerary was just Kenya and South Africa, but when they learned that we were traveling to Africa, they offered to bring us to Zimbabwe so we could also feature it, since most Filipino travelers don't even consider it as a destination. But rest assured that the opinions we shared here are honest and our own. If you're coming from the Philippines and you wish to visit both Victoria Falls and South Africa, book an all-in package with Constellation Travels. They offer South Africa tour packages and you may opt to have a Victoria Falls stop as an add-on. This will allow you to explore the southern region of Africa better. Note that if you're feeling of a tour package, visa application for South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe are already included. This is great for those who don't have the time, energy, or bandwidth to deal with the whole travel planning and online application process. Especially the planning part in Africa, it's no joke. It's pretty hard to put this together. So get in touch with Constellation Travels through these contact numbers and email address. If you enjoyed this video and all our other videos and travel guides, consider booking a package with them as they also support us experience new adventures. In our next video, we'll tackle Cape Town. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, ring the bell, and select all so you're notified when it's out. If you're watching this on Facebook, like and follow this page too. You can also follow us on Instagram, X, formerly Twitter, and TikTok. Just search at The Poor Traveler, single L. We also have a podcast. Follow The Poor Traveler Podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If our videos helped you in any way, you can tip us via PayPal, Gcash, Maya, credit card, or even bank transfer. Just head over to thepoortraveler.net slash tip to show us some love. All tips this month will be going to the Poor Traveler Scholarship Fund. That's all for now. Remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip 
worth it.